the window and speak to his roll fans. Roll down the window, uh, stick his hand out sometimes. It's anything to show his fans that he loves them. And going specifically to the last uh, uh, week of his life, uh, do you recall the rehearsals occurring at the Staples Center? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And would there be fans at the Staples Center uh, out exterior location as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, there were. And I assume that was true for both the forum and center staging? Yeah, especially the forum and center staging. Okay. And as a general routine, uh, when you would take Michael Jackson to these rehearsals uh, at the three locations you've mentioned, what would you do as the rehearsals were taking place? Uh, I was an employee, but I was a fan first, so I would try to sneak and watch him, see what I can see, and that's what I usually did. But he would always have me do, getting something, uh, making sure his room was okay, doing calls for the next day. So I was constantly working, but I tried. Uh, I was able to see him perform a little bit at the Staples Center. Okay. And talking about, um, again, the, the general routine that was followed, you indicated that, uh, and I'm, I'm going to focus specifically on the routine uh, for rehearsals. Mm -hmm. um, so you would take Mr. Jackson to rehearsals in the manner you described. Yes, sir. Uh, you would remain at the rehearsals. Is that correct? Uh, if I, unless I was gone. Unless you had some other task. Yes, sir. Uh, and then for the return home following rehearsals, would it be the same routine with the two vehicles and the basic same uh, seating yeah. arrangement? Yes, sir. A vehicle will go in advance, uh, let us know there's fans out there, and they would, they would uh, post up to make sure we still can get in safe, even though there were fans, just to have security there. Um, and then Mr. Jackson, the principal's car, uh, then the trail car, we would stop, uh, greet the fans. They would usually give gifts or stuff to sign. Uh, so we made sure we stopped for that. Then we would proceed to go to his home. Okay. To 100 North Carrollwood? To 100 North Carrollwood. Okay. And what would be the general routine once you uh, pulled onto the property at 100 North Carrollwood? Well, usually the same fans beat us there, and they'll be right out there to do more greetings and more when you stuff. said the same fans, you mean the fans that were The fans at that were at Staples Center would usually beat us back to the house and get out the car and wait. And, so you... Uh, so and you would, would leave Staples Center and mm -hmm. see fans outside? The same exact ones. And then yeah. they would presumably get in their car and beat you home? They and would be beat us there, yes, sir. And, uh, and we did the same thing. We stopped. We greeted them. Uh, you know, his fans are great, so it wasn't a problem. But, you know, once we get, they would uh, sometimes give gifts. So we would stop, get, collect everything. Then he would go inside. And when you, you collect, every, collect everything and go inside, okay. um, would that be the area uh, you've identified in people's aid, this kind of front entry or front foyer area of the house? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you carried gifts or any items inside, was there an area where you would, would leave them when you entered the home? Yes, sir. We would walk in and we would leave the gifts on the first two steps. We would leave uh, whatever material we had, clothes. We, we would leave it there. Uh, and for the record, you've indicated the, the base of the stairs on the first floor uh, with the stairs that you've identified on the left of the photograph? Correct. As soon as you walk in the stairs to your, uh, to your left, we would, uh, Mr. Jackson, would, we would usually walk him in. We would stop there, load everything, um, and he would say some kind words, thank you, you know, love, all the kind things that he say. Uh, we would leave everything there, and then we'll exit the home. Okay. And so as part of your normal practice, is it accurate to say you would not go upstairs? Yes, sir. That is accurate? I would, I would not go upstairs, correct. And as far as your knowledge as a personal assistant of Michael Jackson, was that kind of a rule across the board unless invited upstairs? Correct. He, he liked his privacy, and we respected that. So unless uh, security didn't rarely went upstairs, if ever, maybe to carry something large, they didn't go upstairs. I went upstairs when asked, uh, you know, we would make, we may, he may ask me to help set something up. He's embarking on a narrative. I'm uh, sorry. He's embarking on a narrative. All right. The answer remains. The objection is sustained. So you would go, question. thank you, Your Honor. You would go upstairs when asked specifically. Correct. When asked specifically. Uh, and that was rare? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't rare. Okay. Uh, 
and then security would go up very rarely. Yeah, it's rare for security. Yes, and you sir. indicated that was if they had to move some furniture or something of that yes, nature. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Mr. Williams, do you know Conrad Murray? Yes, sir. Do you see him in court here today? Yes, sir, I do. Could you please identify him for the record? A gentleman sitting uh, with the gray, top, gray, gray suit. Indicating Dr. Murray, the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Sir, when did you first meet uh, Dr. Murray? Uh, I believe sometime in 2008. And where were you when you first met Dr. Murray? To the best of my knowledge, Las Vegas. Um, well, let me ask you, what, what period of time in 2008 do you recall? I don't recall. I remember in 2007 seeing him, but I don't remember ever, ever formally meeting him in two, until uh, 2008. Maybe okay. late 2007, but it's safer for me to say 2008. Okay, but you had seen him previously? Correct. Okay, so let me ask you that. When did you first see uh, Dr. Murray? Uh, he had come to visit the house one day, and I wasn't introduced or, you know, I just seen a tall gentleman who I was told is, you know, is Dr. Murray, but it was no formal introduction. Which house was that? Uh, this was a house in Vegas. It wasn't, I don't know the address, but it, before the, uh, bef I'm not sure what the address was. It was okay. in Vegas, though. Was Michael Jackson living in Las Vegas at that time? Correct, yes, okay. sir. Before Virginia. Okay. So in, sometime in 2007, while living, while Michael was living in Las Vegas, Correct. you saw Conrad Murray? Correct, yes, okay. sir. Okay. And that was at Michael Jackson's house? Correct. Okay. McNeil. Yes, sir. Thank you. And... At that first encounter, you indicated you were not introduced to him, but you were aware he was Michael Jackson's doctor, or he was a doctor. Yes, sir. I seen him, and it was nothing formal at all. Okay. Was, that's his doctor. And then at some point, I guess in early 2008, he was introduced to you as Michael Jackson's doctor? And I can't recall if I was introduced, but I started calling him. Mr. Jackson requested me to call Dr. Murray. Uh, the children have a cold, or he would help with anything as far okay. as if they were ill, if the children were ill, or if he hurt or something. Okay. So you would telephone him at the request of Michael Jackson? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, this is while living in Las Vegas? Correct. Now, in the months preceding June 25, 2009, uh, specifically... Uh, let's April, May, and June, that, that time frame. Uh, would you see Conrad Murray at the 100 North Carrollwood location? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. And uh, would that be uh, frequently at that time? At, in those months, it was frequently. Okay. That typically be uh, Conrad Murray coming in the nighttime and staying the night? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you... Uh, during that time period, become familiar with the vehicle uh, used by Conrad Murray? Yes, sir. Okay. You want two photographs uh, of a BMW parked at 100 North Carrollwood? Uh, may these be marked uh, People's 10 and 11, respectively? Yes. Do you see uh, the photograph uh, depicted in People's Tent? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that Dr. Murray's uh, uh, convertible BMW parked in the driveway of 100 North Carrollwood? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, as well as uh, People's 11 from a different vantage point? Yes, sir. And during this time period then of April, May, and June, um, when you would return from rehearsals in the evening, was it common to see Conrad Murray's BMW parked in the driveway as it's shown in People's 10 and 11? Yes, sir. Okay. Was well, common to see the same vehicle parked there in the morning? It, was, it wasn't uncommon. Okay. Would you have dealings uh, with Conrad Murray during this time period of April, May, and June uh, while Michael lived at 100 North Carrollwood? Yes, sir. And what would those dealings involve? Uh, the request of Mr. Jackson asked me to reach out for him. Uh, Mr. Jackson had his own cell phone, but 
didn't use it sometimes or would want me to try to get in contact with someone. So okay. usually by request. Now, the rehearsals that were taking place uh, at the Forum and then at the very end at Staples Center, uh, what, time would the, what time would you generally leave to go to those rehearsals? I would say maybe late afternoon. Okay. And what time would you generally, uh, and I know they must have varied, mm -hmm. but t what time would you generally bring Mr. Jackson home from the rehearsals? Evening. I would say it was dark. Okay, when it was dark? Yes, when it was dark. Okay, right. and the time could vary? The time. Now, was there a, a, a procedure uh, that you were personally involved in whereby you would, uh, upon completion of rehearsals, call Conrad Murray to make sure he was either at the house or on his way to the house? It wasn't uncommon. Uh, it was common for Mr. Jackson to uh, either call him himself or ask me to call him and pass the phone back or just okay. find out if he's at the house. Okay. Now, I want to uh, go directly to June 24th, um, 2009, uh, and ask you about the, uh, the last rehearsal uh, that took place. Um, do you recall that, that evening? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you recall what time you left uh, 100 North Carrollwood to head to the Staples Center that night? We were a little late. I know it was in, the, uh, in the maybe five or six. Okay. Could be off an hour or two, but it was being to the Staples Center. Was it the uh, basic security arrangement you described earlier with the multiple vehicles being involved? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you go to the rehearsal on June 24, 2009? Yes, sir. And how did you get to the rehearsal? I drove in the front seat uh, in the principal vehicle with Mr. Jackson in the back seat. Okay. And who was driving? Uh, Fahim Mohammed. Was anyone else in the vehicle? No, sir. Okay. And do you recall Mr. Jackson's general demeanor, mood, uh, that evening of June 24th, 2009? He was in a good spirit. I know he wanted to get there uh, on time, so he was adamant about, okay, let's go, let's get there, you know. So he was in good spirits, though. Okay. Well, Jackson greeted the fans upon arrival to the home? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, how would you describe his demeanor at that time, at the conclusion, once the rehearsal had all been completed and he's now being driven home and arriving home at 100 North Carrollwood, what was his demeanor? He was in good spirits. He was, he, he uh, sometimes, very rarely, if he's not feeling well, he may want to just drive in and just wave as the car goes by, but he wanted to stop and say hi. I remember they even, he even held small conversations with the fans. So he was, he was in great spirits. And that occurred in the driveway just before entering the gate? Correct. So, okay. And when you then entered onto the property, uh, did you see uh, Dr. Murray's vehicle? Yes, sir. Okay. And is, in fact, is that what is depicted in People's 10 and 11, uh, the location of Dr. Murray's vehicle when you pulled onto the property? Yes, sir. That's where he usually parked. Okay. And you saw it that night? Yes, sir. And did you arrive at Staples Center without any problems or complications? Yes, sir. Okay. And what happened upon your arrival at Staples Center? Same routine, uh, fans outside. We pull in under, I believe the type of underground parking. Um, and then rehearsal. Okay. And uh, as you had indicated before, were you able to watch some of the rehearsal? Yeah, I was able to watch that night. Yes, okay. sir. And how would you describe the rehearsal? Personally, I thought it was amazing. It was on This Is It. That was my first time ever seeing him perform, so I thought it was, you know, the best thing in the world. You know, later, he told me he just, you know, he doesn't go 100% to the show. He was just going 30 or 40, but I, I thought it was great. Okay. Um, how late did the rehearsal last, uh, as best as you can recall? I remember it was late, so it had to be uh, around midnight. Okay. And following the uh, conclusion of the rehearsal, what, what happened? Uh, the, the same routine. We, uh, he had some things, I remember. I don't know if it was gifts or homework from the tour, paper, I'm not sure. But we loaded his vehicle. Um, he got in the vehicle. The advance car went in ahead. Um, we made sure that everything was at the house was set up. We drove 
from the Staples Center to the 100 North Carrollwood residence, uh, straight there. There's fans outside, same fans and some new fans. And uh, he uh, stopped. I believe he rolled his window down and said some words. Uh, then we proceeded to drive into the, the residence. Okay. And it, it was a walled-in gated residence, correct? Correct. So it, there would be a, um, you'd have to have access and have the gates open up for the vehicles to proceed. And had you called Dr. Murray uh, that night to, uh, to make sure that he was on his way or at the house? It would be normal if I did. Okay. Can't recall a conversation, though. Okay. If it's reflected in your phone records, um, would that surprise you? Not at all. Okay. So once you arrived at the house then and got onto the property, uh, what, what took place? He had uh, gifts with him or material with him. So I remember taking some and uh, maybe someone helped me. Maybe Alberto or Fahim helped me. When you say and Alberto, is that Alberto Alvarez? Alberto Alvarez. Alvarez. Okay. Um, and we would proceed to bring everything to the first two steps. Um, and he would usually wait for us to load everything up. Then he would say good night, and we, we left from, the, uh, from his house. Okay. And after you said good night to Mr. Jackson that night, uh, what did you do? Security went in the trailer. They do as they usually do every night. They debrief of how the day went, what they could do better. I usually don't stick around for that. I just made sure, you know, he was in the house, the security was okay, and I, I left that night. Okay. So after debriefing the trailer, then you go on your way, your shift is done, and you went home? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, on the exterior of the home, uh, remain on a 24-hour basis? Yes, sir. Okay, and I assume there's different shifts? Yes, sir. Okay. And they would remain in the trailer? Uh, they would either walk around the front, opening a gate, or doing a perimeter, perimeter tra check, but they would uh, stay their station in the trailer. Okay. So you went home uh, uh, for the evening, and did you return, or let me ask you that, uh, where were you living at that time? What general area? Downtown Los Angeles. Okay. And is that where you went after your shift, after debriefing in the trailer? Yes, sir. And I assume you slept there at your home that night? Yes, sir. Okay. The following day then, June 25th, 2009, um, did you receive a phone call from Conrad Murray? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, do you recall what time that phone call was received by you? To my knowledge, it was 12, 13 p.m. Okay. That's what showed up on your phone? Yes, sir. And was that a phone call that you were able to answer? No, sir. Uh, why is that? I was in the shower getting ready to get dressed. Okay. When did you learn of the phone call? Uh, I was getting out and I checked and I believe calling back at around 12.15 when I got the message. So you, you, you got out of the shower, you saw there was a message? Yes, sir. Okay. You heard the message? Yes, sir. And uh, what was the message? Uh, it, was, it was Dr. Murray. I uh, can't quote it exactly, but it was, call me right away, call me right away, thank you. Something okay. to that effect. And uh, were you asked to call 911? No, sir. Okay. Did you, upon hearing that message, call Dr. Murray? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you able to make contact with him? Yes, sir. Did he ask you to call 911? No, sir. What did he say? Uh, he said, where are you? And I said, I'm downtown. And he said, uh, get here right away. Mr. Jackson had a bad reaction. Uh, get here right away. And I said, what's going on? And he said, get somebody up here immediately. And then... And did that terminate that phone call? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the voicemail message uh, that Dr. Murray uh, left on your phone, did you document that in some way? Yes, sir. How did you document that? Um, I was told from detectives or meeting with some people, the detectives, I believe, to, to save all my information that I have regarding this. So it's an iPhone. The best thing I thought was just to record it. So I just recorded myself playing the voicemail. Okay. And you actually, you mean a video recording of you manipulating the iPhone and showing the voicemail and playing it? Correct. A basic. 
Can I have a... Uh, I'm going to play the video in just one moment. I also have a still photograph taken from the video, Your Honor. May that be marked People's 12 for identification? The still? Yes, please. Still, pe People's 12. And